Afternoon, everyone. I'm Paco Balderrama, Chief of Police here in uh, the city of Fresno. And uh, I'm here to address a couple of issues, but uh, before I do, I do want to send out my condolences to the Charlotte Mecklenburg Police Department. Um, earlier today, a couple hours ago, they had an operation that apparently went bad. Uh, at least nine police officers were shot. Uh, three are suspected to be deceased at this point. It turn, uh, turns out they were probably um, uh, task force officers with the U.S. Marshals Task Force, which um, that city happens to be a hub there. Um, of. I've reached out to uh, Chief of Police Johnny Jennings, uh, one of the nicest people you've ever met. I was actually with him last week at a tech conference, and uh, he's in good spirits, but obviously got a lot going on right now, so our thoughts and prayers are with that police department. And I reminded my command staff earlier of just uh, the dangers of, of police work in general and what we can do to keep our police officers safe. So I'm here this afternoon to talk about an incident that occurred this weekend on Saturday, uh, April 27th, just before uh, 4 p.m. Um, that's when the Central Policing District responded to a call of a physical disturbance at Echo Avenue and Hedges Avenue. This is near uh, the Tower District and uh, while people were celebrating Porch Fest. Uh, there were several victims at the scene uh, who were all females and they basically stated that an intoxicated male, um, later identified as 49-year-old Francisco Samaniego, approached them, uh, began an argument um, for over their support of, of Palestine. That argument escalated into a physical uh, altercation. Um, it escalated into the grabbing and destroying of a couple of cell phones. Um, there, were, there was a lot of profane language used um, that really focused on um, their, um, their, their perceived um, place of birth and who they were supporting. Um, therefore, this incident was classified as a, as a hate crime. Uh, the suspect was found um, apprehended and was identified as a suspect in question. I know there's a, a, at least a couple of uh, videos floating around uh, showing the altercation. And uh, this individual was charged uh, with robbery, which is a felony, uh, PC-242 battery on a person, uh, PC 422.6, which is a violation of civil rights, hate crime, and then finally PC 594 AS, which is vandalism. Uh, as I stated earlier in my, in my statement, the equal protection of all members of our community, regardless of their political affiliation, social status, race, creed, or sexual preference, is a top priority for the Fresno Police Department. Uh, the assault which occurred last Saturday at Porch Fest is being investigated as a hate crime and we are happy to say that the perpetrator was arrested. The Fresno community does not stand for hate or lawlessness, and we will continue to work with all members of our city to make sure that everyone can express their beliefs without fear of violence. Um, I did communicate this weekend with our council president, Annalisa Perea, that happens to be her district, so she had some concerns. I spoke to her earlier today. Um, um, she's, you know, she was sad that she could be here at the press conference because obviously she represents the community in the tower, and uh, we hope that our uh, that folks in this community feel uh, supported because uh, any time that there is a hate crime reported to this police department, we're going to investigate it fully and we're going to um, present charges to either the district attorney or our federal partners, the U.S. attorney, uh, when when appropriate. So just to give give you some uh, basic stats. Uh, last year in 2023, we had a total of 20 hate crimes and 20, oh, I'm sorry, 20 hate crimes and seven hate incidents um, with a total of 36 victims. Keep in mind, a, hate, a reported hate crime is one, as I described today, where uh, it is a crime, criminal activity, whether it's an assault or vandalism or something else, and the motivation is a hate crime, you know, um, racism, um, you know, hate for somebody else from another country, uh, their color of their skin, whatever, whatever the case may be. Uh, a hate incident is uh, basically an incident that is motivated by hate, but is not against the law. You know, basically being ugly and nasty and saying terrible things uh, is not against the law unless we can associate them with actual physical threats. And so that's the difference between the two. And although they are very hard to prove, um, you know, in this particular case, we had video evidence. We had several um, witnesses uh, and victims to the crime who cooperated with police for us to be able to to make the arrests. Uh, so far this year, we've had a total of nine hate hate crimes and two hate incidents with a total of 17 uh, hate crime victims. Now, 
you know, I, I am a, you know, a chief that really that highly depends on stats and numbers. So clearly you can see that although these numbers are not astronomical, uh, they don't compare to larcenies or other types of crimes. Um, it is a concern to myself as well as several other chiefs across the country that we are seeing um, an increase in these. And, um, you know, all you have to do is watch the evening news um, and figure out why. You know, this is an election year. Um, uh, for whatever reason, on topics of political affiliation, uh, religion, um, you know, several ideologies, people just, you know, uh, can't help but disagree. Um, and, and that's okay. You know, we, li we live in a free country where you have the right to express your feelings, your thoughts, your, your, your philosophies, whatever that may be. But um, also when, when crime is associated with these beliefs and people are being discriminated against, attacked, verbally abused, uh, or threatened because of the, those ideologies, that's when it becomes a hate crime. And we have seen a little bit of an increase um, probably associated with uh, some of the political uh, things going on across the country, but that's not me for a police chief to you know sit back and, and, and analyze too much. All I can tell you is that uh, we're, we're certainly focused on protecting the rights of every person in, in our community, and uh, we're gonna do that to the best of our ability. So, any questions? When it's associated with uh, felonious activity. So, for example, if this was a an aggravated assault which caused serious injury, well, then that hate crime is associated with that felony crime. So it just really depends on 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 several factors, and ultimately, it may it, it may be upgraded to a felony. That's uh, that depends on uh, what we uncover in the investigation, what further evidence we're able to get, and when we, when we present that to either the district attorney or the U.S. attorney, they'll de they'll determine what level that that crime is going to be charged. At. But no, it, it, it definitely can uh, become a felony, but it's typically what, it, what other crimes it's associated with. Any other questions? How are the women doing? Um, you know, obviously, you know, shooken up. You know, you don't ex expect something like that to happen while you're um, celebrating Porch Fest and, and trying to, to be involved in a community event. Uh, they did not re uh, require um, hospitalization. Um, they were checked out at the scene, and uh, you know, so 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 they they were assaulted, but they were not seriously assaulted. And you know, if, if there's anything good, you know, from this situation, it's that that they're not seriously they weren't seriously hurt. And, and obviously, you mentioned that the suspect is under the influence of alcohol. So, do we think alcohol really fueled this all and maybe escalated? Well, I certainly want, don't want to use that as, a, as an excuse. You know, we can't say that, you know, because this person was heavily intoxicated, you're correct, that that's why this occurred. Um, you know, we don't know what that person's motive, true motivations were, um, but I can tell you from my experience, I, I, I don't see very many people make great decisions while they're under the influence of, of, of alcohol. And that certainly played a role in escalating this incident. And people seem to be afraid of calling and getting hurt and reporting no, not at all. Uh, as a matter of fact, there will be a, um, a community meeting tonight in, in that particular district. Uh, we're going to have two uh, of the district captains attend along with the uh, uh, council president. You know, we can't go into any more details than what I've stated today because this is still an open investigation. It's only 48 hours old uh, and, and we have to do our due diligence as far as um, gathering all the evidence and we don't want to taint the case but um, you know I'm, I'm, I'm coming forward because there is a lot of interest uh, from the public from the community from the media and it's it, it's up to us to, to calm any fears again going back to the stats uh, very rare um, statistically speaking they don't happen all the time but when they do uh, they are serious incidents and, and we're going to investigate them fully Chief, if, if somebody is, is you know making antagonizing remarks hate incident would you recommend somebody call um, police on something like that? Well, I mean, if, if, if you know, to, to clarify, and that, that's a difficult question. You know, if, if people called us, call 911, anytime somebody was ugly and nasty to them on social media, well, then, you know, we 24 7, we would just be taking those types of calls. And I mean, that, maybe in person, like a, a personal interaction? You know, quite possibly. It, it's really when it escalates into um, the source of those comments being made because of someone's race, gender. Creed, uh, sexual preference, country of origin, uh, those things, if they're fueled by that, um, and you can tell if you feel fear, if you fear that you are being um, 
uh, isolated because of that uh, or, or attacked because of one of those reasons, then no, we, we, we do want to know that information. Um, a, a lot of these things start on social media. This one does, didn't. This was a person to person, but a lot of this stuff you see on social media and it gets quite nasty and ugly um, and, and there's no excuse for it. But, you know, when it comes to just um, people just being ugly to each other, that's, you know, sadly that, that is not against the law. People have the, the right to express themselves. It becomes a crime when people threaten um, somebody's safety, uh, they make threats or they actually physically attack somebody, uh, clearly that's against the law. And then much more so when it's done because of a, of a hate crime or because they're discriminating against that person for one of the reasons that I stated earlier. You know, I didn't look up this person's uh, criminal history. Um, uh, we can get you that information. You know, I, I had the information, and um, I can tell you it's tonight. I believe it's from 530. It's on North Van Ness, and it's um, for, for, for that particular district that our council president is over. So I'm sure you can get more information from her office, and we will have a couple of our district captains from northwest and northeast present. Uh, in this particular case, it was pretty clear. Um, you know, because of the of the comments that the suspect was making, it was very clear that this was uh, racially motivated. That uh, he was focused on, on on his perceived country of or origin that that the victims were were from. Um, so so in this case, it was pretty clear that that's, that was the motivating factor. Um, and and really, some of the some of the derogatory, uh, profane comments that were made were is, is not something that should be made out in public. Um, our supervisors did a phenomenal job. Uh, this was the central policing district. They responded quickly. They they managed to find the suspect who had walked away uh, from from the crime scene and get him identified and make the arrest. Uh, so so at the scene, they 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 filed this as or, or they documented this as a hate crime. Now we're the, that we're looking um, a little bit more into it. I concur with their findings. I, I think it was, but it'll be ultimately up to the either the district attorney or the U.S. attorney how this case is actually filed in a court of law. And how long did it take? You know, I don't have that information within minutes because he was close by, um, um, so it, it didn't take very long for us to get there. All right, thank you guys very much. Appreciate you. Thank you.